Today we're taking a look at the San Diego, a ship that I'm a little bit late to the party on, but I thought I'd give you guys my impressions on it anyway. So far, I've been playing this ship a bit like a tier 8 Austin. It doesn't quite work like that ship since we don't have the unlimited reload boosters, but there's some potential in this thing, given the sap, of course, that's the defining characteristic. We're an Atlanta at tier 8 with sap. Now I gotta say, this is again on this CC account and this ship was provided for me to play by Wargaming. I think that this ship is pretty fun. I think it has some serious potential to be a fun, fun ship. I've always kind of just enjoyed playing Atlanta. It's been not great recently and this ship makes up for that in a lot of key areas, namely in the gun range and the shell velocity. Atlanta is really tough to play these days because you get yourself into tier 8, tier 9 games and then you're just kind of stuck with no range and even at your maximum range of, what is it, 13.3 kilometers, you're kind of just not able to hit very much stuff at that range, <laughs> whereas San Diego has good enough shell velocity to reasonably reliably hit things. The weakness, of course, is no HE, right? We don't have high explosive here, we're not going to be able to do good damage against angled targets. The SAP though does like the Austin Pen 37 millimeters, I believe, which is a lot. It's a lot of. <laughs> the key threshold here is 32 millimeters, right? So battleships, if they go broadside or even give you a slight angle, yeah, they're taking huge, huge damage. Positions like this are ones that I love to play in ships like the Austin, like the San Diego as well. Ships that have some pretty high burst ability. The torpedoes here are just Atlanta torps, right? but only four kilometers, four and a half kilometers, but the alpha damage is pretty good, allowing us to play a position like this. If the enemy team decides to rush, we got a reload booster and we got some torps ready for people. We don't, however, have the armor of the Austin, and that's a bit of an issue. Austin, of course, has a 32 millimeter upper belt, which allows you to bounce a lot of battleship salvos, whereas this thing, yeah, you're just getting overmatched everywhere. You're relying on overpens. That's what you're really relying on. Another reason I wanted to show you guys this game specifically was the carrier was kind of after me this one. I don't know if you've uh, noticed that so far, but yeah, he's been coming after me and it's all right. I think we all know that AA is pretty weak these days. It's kind of just for show. We have 12 playing kills, but if you look closely, those 12 playing kills are mostly going to be coming from his uh, his fighter squadrons, right? Not from the actual damaging planes. The reload booster, while really good and useful, is not an Austin reload booster. You don't get unlimited versions of them, they don't reload particularly quickly, and they only give you a 33% uh, DPM buff, right? They're not the full 50% or more, right, like some of these other reload boosters can be. But we still managed to pick up the Oddland and managed to, well, save our team from a backline enemy destroyer, which is always a good thing. We're going to pick up a lot more damage here. The very beginning of a lot of the games you're going to see in San Diego and just cruisers in general are pretty passive. You'll notice that there's 13 and a half minutes on the clock still. We don't have too much damage. That's really important to know here. I cut out a lot of the downtime, but... Keep in mind that I'm playing very passive. A lot of times these cruisers, especially light cruisers, playing passive at the start is really, really important. Waiting for the enemy team to come to you, picking a decent position. Like here we're in a pretty aggressive position, I'll admit. Um, not every game is it gonna work from this island, for example, but playing passive, waiting for the enemy team to come to you, and then pushing out when the opportunity presents itself. The Z10 is completely focused on Aramagi, so we're going to push out and offer some supporting damage, like a cruiser should be doing. Of course, I am a little bit more confident in a ship like San Diego compared to some other tier 8 cruisers because I got a heal, right? Being able to heal back damage, like I've talked about previously, is so, so nice for a cruiser player who wants to play more aggressive. It allows you to come back from mistakes where you lose a ton of HP, it allows you to play aggressive into a North Carolina that overmatches you everywhere and think, as long as I can survive one salvo, I'm gonna kill this guy, right? He's stuck bow in. Fortunately for us, he's not even looking our way. <laughs> he was probably more focused on the NC that was gonna be coming around his other flank. So we see he's accelerating. We put our torps in front of him. Notice we shoot the bow until it's saturated. 
Notice how it got saturated there, it got dark, but we got one really good salvo in. That's something, at least at close range, you can be thinking of in these ships. Destroyers as well, you can be shooting the bow of ships with armor piercing if you don't have sap. And shooting there means you're gonna get a ton of really, really good damaging salvos until it saturates. Saturation, of course, looks like the middle of this Kansas, right? We can see how uh, kind of dirty it looks or, well, beaten up, right? Whereas a totally clean section of a ship is gonna offer you the absolute best damage possible. I make a bit of a mistake here. I should have kept farming the Kansas, got him out of the game, but as you can see, we're very handily winning this game. I wanted to shoot the Sherberg though to show you how the damage changes as people are bow on to you, right? Notice how we've been getting some pretty good pens, right? 45 pens so far in this chain, but as we're getting more bow on to the Sherberg, we're getting more and more shatters, more and more bounces. And that really comes down to just the weakness of sap. It's really good against slightly angled broadside targets, right? You get all the consistency of high explosive with the alpha damage of armor piercing. But against these bow in ships like this Sherberg is here, it's not gonna do too much damage. So that's gonna be the downside of a San Diego. I think the two issues you're probably gonna find with this ship is no smoke, right? So a lot of light cruisers tend to get smoke screens to help them position. And the other thing is no HE. So if you find yourself constantly facing bow on targets, you're not gonna have too much damage. You can see in this game, we're already up to 125K damage, which is really, really solid for a tier eight light cruiser. But this only really comes when people are broadside. And it, obviously it helped that we, uh, we yellowed into a North Carolina who wasn't able to shoot back at us, right? That helped in this game. But I really wanna point this out here that San Diego could be difficult to play if you're not able to catch broadsides, right? We're shooting up into the superstructure of this Richelieu and it's going pretty well. We're getting decent damage, but as soon as he, if he was broadside, we'd be getting five, 6,000 damage salvos rather than 1,000, one and a half thousand, right? So that's what it really comes down to here is your ability to position as a light cruiser, moving around the map, taking out targets of opportunity, and of course, supporting your destroyers. This sap plus a reload booster is an excellent way to win games by impacting those DD fights. So 135K here, a decent result, top score. This of course was an all tier eight game. So in those up tiers against tier tens, it's gonna be a lot harder to play. But of course against tier six, yeah, you can do some pretty nasty things in this ship. And since it's tier eight premium, yeah, we're just raking in the credits here. <laughs> Half million from one game alone without any of the new boosters. As for the build on the San Diego, it's a light cruiser, right? So we're going with concealment. We're trying to get as many heals as we can with superintendent. And I'm still going with survivability expert. I think the extra HP is very nice here, bumping us up over 30K. Other than that, right, we're taking priority target. I think last stand is pretty important. And if you noticed, my engine got taken out a couple times this game and having last stand helped me just continue to play my ship, right? It's a light cruiser. Atlantas can lose their engine, can lose their rudder. So may as well not take a chance. As for the rest of the upgrades, interestingly, we're taking heavy HE and sap trying to boost that sap alpha as much as possible. Since we only have sap and AP, we're basically using sap all the time. This acts as a permanent 10% damage buff for our ship. Adrenaline rush, of course, is always good. The reason we can take this, set, this upgrade and not have this penalty, of course, is because our gun caliber is less than 149 millimeters. So we still retain a really good concealment of 9.3 kilometers. And honestly, the base range on this ship of 14.8 is really quite comfortable. Atlanta, Atlanta hurts. Moving from an Atlanta to a San Diego, it's a night and day difference. This is a much more comfortable ship to play. As far as the upgrades are concerned, I think this is pretty standard already for cruiser builds. I'll just show it to you anyway. So that's my first impressions on the San Diego. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. I should note that really don't use the armor piercing on this ship or any ships with sap the only times that armor piercing is better than sap is if you're able to citadel. That's that's one of the only times. Or if your sap doesn't have enough pen to get through the armor you're facing and that armor is broadside. If the armor is bow on to you, just shoot sap into the superstructure. So the examples of that could be, let's say you're playing an Italian battleship and you're facing a German battleship and the German battleship's broadside. 
armor piercing into that broadside is going to do much, much better. However, if you're facing cruisers, if you're facing battleships at longer ranges in those Italian battleships, their dispersion's not great, so landing sap shells can do much more than trying to get those poor dispersion shells to hit a citadel. And with cruisers, it's even more so you want to be shooting sap. Sap, 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 everything, unless you're getting citadels. Other than that, keep with the sap. So that's my advice. I think that the San Diego is a pretty interesting ship. It's a much, much better Atlanta, but again, it's a tier higher. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.